Hey, what's up? Pete Silvignard here. Uh, so, I'm going to start a series of GIMP tutorials. Hopefully these tutorials will help you go from knowing nothing about GIMP to being able to do as much as you did with Photoshop uh, and GIMP. If you're wondering why I'm qualified to do GIMP tutorials, I've been using GIMP for three years. I used to do graphic design on GIMP um, before I did YouTube, and um, I also make all my thumbnails with GIMP and stuff, and... Yeah, I, I just know how it works. <laughs> so let's get into the video. So this is what GIMP looks like out of the box. For this tutorial, I'm going to go into Edit, Preferences, and I'm going to go to Icon Size, or Icon Theme. And I'm going to change this guest icon size from Resolution. I'm going to change that to guest icon size from Theme, or not from Theme, from, to Custom. And then I'm going to set this to medium. So these now these icons are a little bit bigger just so it's easier to see them. Uh, if you want, you can, GIMP is pretty customizable. You can make all the icons huge if you want. You could go over to the theme and customize the look of GIMP. It's pretty customizable by default, um, which is pretty cool. Now I'm going to stick with dark because that's the default. Although system is my favorite because then it makes it look and integrate with your system. So yeah, GIMP is pretty customizable. So first, let's just go through the general interface. So right here we have our menu. So this file menu lets you create and open images. Um, this edit menu uh, lets you uh, do stuff like cut and paste, look at your undo history, and go to preferences and stuff like that. The select menu is for managing selections. Our view menu is for kind of customizing GIMP a little bit so you can zoom stuff out, you can show your grid and stuff. Uh, you probably won't be using this view menu that much unless you customize GIMP on a daily basis or something. Uh, this image thing is just for like uh, this transform thing lets you like flip the image around and rotate it. And then there's also fit the canvas to uh, selection so you can have a selection and then uh, have the canvas resize to that. There's some options in here, I'll get into those later. Layers, uh, this is the menu for managing layers right here. We have a color management uh, menu. We have some menus for tools. So uh, if you don't want to have a toolbox, you can just go into tools and you can access all of the tools for, that are normally in the toolbox inside of tools. We have filters, which you can use for uh, for uh, add, like transforming images in interesting ways that you wouldn't be able to do otherwise. And then windows is another menu for customizing camp and then we have help that's pretty self-explanatory now i'm going to make a new image by going to file and new uh, and we'll just keep this at default 1080p and by default it will it usually makes a uh white image but uh i had my background color set to black so this is what it would normally look like so let's first go over the toolbox that's on the top uh left so um, we have all of our tools right here in a nice grid layout. Um, however, if you right-click a tool, you'll find some kind of categories here. So, for example, if I right-click Rectangle Select, I can access Ellipse Select 2. If I right-click the... If I right-click the Scale tool, we have a bunch of options here. So, that's how you access more tools, by right-clicking. Uh, on this box right here, this is our tool options by default. However, if you click right here, we have some pointer options. Right here we have our undo history. And right here we have all of the images open. So if I want to take one image and add it into this one, I can do that. On the right over here on the top right we have our brushes. So uh, if I were to switch to the paintbrush tool, um, we have all of our brushes right here. So if I click one, it automatically switches the paintbrush tool to that brush. Um, so I, I could do that for all of them. Right here we have some patterns, so now if I want to take like the paint fill tool and go to two options, I can do a pattern fill. I'll, I'll get to those later. We have our fonts, so if I click on a font right here, uh, I can now go to the text tool and it will use that font I just clicked on. And here we have all of our recent images. Now if you're wondering why I have so many logos as my recent images, it's because I'm building an operating system and I'm building a web app store. So these are all the icons for the web apps. I am using. And finally, on the bottom right for our dock, we have our layers right here. Um, we have our color, color channel, so you can 
I'll get into channels later in a different video, and we have paths. Now, let's talk about zooming in. So, zoom into GIMP, all you have to do is either click on the zoom tool, and now if you click in your image, it will let you zoom in. And if you hold control while clicking, you can zoom out. For whatever reason you don't want to hold control, you can have it over to the tool options right here and set this to be zoom out, and then you don't have to hold control. However, if you hold control while doing it, it will temporarily uh, toggle the option. Another way you can zoom is, th this is the way I like to zoom, hold control and use your scroll wheel to zoom. So as you can see, I'm on my webcam, I'm using my scroll wheel right here to zoom while I'm holding control. Now let's say you wanted to open another image as a layer, so what we're going to do here is go to File, Open as Layers. And I'll, I'm just going to use this meme.png file. This is a t-shirt design I have, link in the description. So now it's imported as a layer, and this is a layer on top of this image. So I'll get into layers uh, in a different video, but yeah. Now if you want to customize GIMP, uh, you can head over into Dockable Dialogues, and there's a bunch of different dialogues right here in here. Let's say I wanted to get a color dialogue. Well, now I click on color and it adds it to this dock. If I want this to be out of this dockable area, I could just click it and drag it out, and now it's still in window. And if I want to move it to, let's say, over here, I could just grab it, click and drag it over here. And I can also drag it into its own area, so by dragging it on this line, and now we have a standard dialogue for coloring. So, uh, you can kind of customize GIMP a little bit based on what you want for your interface. Now, speaking of colors, let's, let me show you how to change the colors. All you have to do is click on these two color squares. Uh, one of them is for the foreground and one of them is for the background. So if I click on the foreground color, now it will bring up this color dialogue. There's several ways you can change the color. There's pretty customizable. GIMP has a lot of options like this that make it very nice to use. But for me, I normally just use a standard color picking option, or I put in an HTML notation. Now for, for changing the background color, just uh, click on the other color below it, so on the bottom right to the black color. The white color is my background color, so now I can change this too. And if you decide, eh, I don't really want white to be my background color, let's make black the background color, all you have to do is click this arrow thing, and this will turn your background color into your foreground color, and your foreground color into your background color. Now, let's say I customize both colors. I have red, and I have, I don't know, pink. Let's say I don't want these colors anymore. Well, if you click this uh, icon right here, uh, then it will change your uh, colors back to black and white. So, yeah. Anyways, that's this video. This is pretty boring video, I will admit. Uh, my next video is going to have more advanced techniques. I think the next video is going to be layers. So, yeah. Uh, thank you for watching this video. Hopefully this series becomes helpful, and I'll see you in the next one. Also, thank you to my patrons, Michelle Valentino and Sam Covet. The support, especially now, is really helpful. So, thank you to those people, and bye.